Hey guys, oh, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to this channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is going to be a book review, but before I get into the book review, I do want to talk about the merchandise that is now available for Daughter of Increase. So, I now have my shirts ready. I told you guys before that I was working on it, and it's finally ready. It's finally ready to be sold, and I'm so excited. I am going to be working on a different design, probably two or three more designs. But for right now, I just have the Daughter of Increase name with the key scripture, which is John 3.30. So, it comes in two colors as of right now. Um, black, which is what I have on, with the bubblegum pink font. And it just says Daughter of Increase. And then on the back, you have the John 3.30 scripture. So I also have it in this Heather, not Heather, it's Ash Gray. But it comes in purple font. So it says Daughter of Increase on the front. And then on the back, you have the John 3.30 scripture. Now, I don't know. A lot of people said that the scripture looks fine. I feel like I should have made it bigger. But we always have room to change things up with um the next design that i do so the next design i might make the scripture a little bit bigger if i keep this one but um yeah now you can get it in ash gray or heather gray i am personally in love with the with the ash sorry this is ash gray but um heather gray is a little bit darker i did purchase my mom and my sister and my first lady um a heather gray shirt so i will take photos of them in that shirt so you guys can see it when I give it to them so you guys can pick your kind of gray but this is kind of like a a gray leaning white whereas the heather gray is like an actual gray so you have those options but I'm so excited they do come in all sizes so from a small to a 5x if need be you can get them in long sleeve you can get them short sleeve you can get them on a hoodie if you want so yeah I am like so so excited and the next thing I'm working on is going to be coffee mugs because I like coffee I like tea um, I love hot chocolates and hot drinks so I'm definitely working on some mugs so I'm excited about that but anyway this video throwing that over there this video is a book review so you guys just saw me um, do my reading blog for this book so I figured I would come on and do a spoiler free version of that because that reading blog was actually um, very spoilery I talked a lot about you know what happened in the book this is just going to be a basic review of my overall thoughts and things like that so the book that I'm talking about if you guys don't know is Heart of a King by Jill Eileen Smith this is the sort of bind up slash new story of her series which is um, called the loves of Solomon yes love of Solomon this is a biblical fiction about King Solomon and four of his wives and I absolutely enjoyed it so much I gave it four stars I couldn't give it a five because I felt like there was something missing um, but I definitely gave it four stars. I enjoyed it so much. I loved the writing. It was flawless. I loved the descriptions. It just pulled me into the story. I loved each of the characters. They were very, very different. Um, I loved how close it stuck to scripture, but how it also took scripture to create such a beautifully written story. I don't know. It was just, it was very, um, poetic. And I guess that makes sense because Song of Solomon is very poetic. So it would make sense. But, um, basically, let me just give you a rundown of what this story is about. So it is obviously about King Solomon and four of his wives. Um, the first one being Nama, the second one Abishag, the third being Sittai, and the fourth being Nicola. But I'm going to say the Queen of Sheba because I can never pronounce her name. So, the Queen of Sheba. And um, it basically looks at Solomon and his wisdom and how well his wisdom worked out for him romance-wise. And um, it didn't work well. It, it didn't work well at all. So, my thoughts on this book, like I said, I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. Um, King Solomon was very well written. He was very much the uh, focused man that I know him to be in the Bible. He was very much um, a very wise man that I know from the Bible. This does take scripture from 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, and Song of Solomon. So these are things I've already studied or read. So I kind of basically understood the scriptures prior to reading this. I will say... I definitely would recommend you guys reading through. You don't have to study those books, but I would say read them through because I know for a few people, they can get confused with biblical fiction um, and understanding what's biblical and what's fiction. Um, you know, biblical fiction takes scripture and creates stories around them. So you really have to understand what parts are true and what parts are false. So um, that's pretty much the only kind of warning I would say for this book. But um Anyway, King Solomon, wisest man, very uh, hardworking, 
But when it comes to romance, he's just a complete idiot. I'm going to put this book down. I hope you guys enjoy the book. <laughs> um, I'm actually probably just going to stick the cover here. But um, yeah, for the wisest man, he is just, when it comes to romance, he sucked at it. Um, he pretty much was like in love with everyone at love at first sight and it, it irritated me and um the way he treated his wives he was very kind to the four women that were like central in this but i mean 700 wives and 100 concubines do you really need more just saying um who else do i want to talk about uh king david and queen Bathsheba. so they made an appearance obviously his parents i love them so much king david um it more so came to the portion where king david was getting ready to die off so that kind of broke my heart because he died and then Bathsheba she was so amazing she was really really um more so active with the wives and giving them um some type of I guess advice and help whereas King David was more active in uh King Solomon's life so that's that um now moving on to the wives so there are four wives four that are mentioned and um the first one being Nama so Nama I think as the first wife she was amazing she was a very um sweet girl they met when they were i believe 10 and then they re-met at 15 and were betrothed and got married at 16 so um pretty much i think nama was great as the first wife um she played her role well she gave him two children kudos now when i didn't like her was when the second wife came into play she was very much a jealous person she went into this marriage thinking she was going to be the only wife but obviously back in those times they had multiple wives to have multiple children multiple heirs and things like that so i feel like she was living in this type of delusional world being the first wife but she also played the role of the first wife really really well um, now moving on to the second wife, Abishag. Abishag is the wife that actually married King David first. Um, this is around the time King David was sick. They, in the scripture, they actually mentioned how they wanted to get him a virgin to warm his bed. Basically to have sex with him to keep him warm. Um, but obviously King David did not know her in that sense. So, Abishag ended up kind of being a nurse, but she was also a wife, if that makes sense. Like, her title was wife, but her role was nurse. So once King David died, she then becomes the wife of um, Solomon. And there's a whole reason why she becomes the wife of Solomon um, that deals with like his half brother wanting to marry her. And it's a whole lot. They mentioned it in the book, but they also mention it in scripture. So I'm not spoiling it for you guys. But yeah, Abishag as a character in this story was amazing. I loved her artsiness. I loved her heart. I love how kind she was. I loved how she didn't... Um, allow people to walk over her and she understood her role she knew that she was a second wife she knew that she couldn't compare to the first wife but she also knew that she wasn't going to be the last wife she knew that david i mean david she knew that solomon would have other wives so she didn't have this delusion kind of like um nama had and she carried herself very well if you guys saw the reading vlog you know how i feel about bishad i love her so much especially for the way she carried herself throughout the story with the different conflicts that took place loved her so much Moving on to the third wife. The third wife was the daughter of the pharaoh, Sitai. I hated her. I'm biased because I, I, I hated her. I really did. Um, because she was just so headstrong. She was bossy. She was cocky. She felt like things were supposed to be given to her. And she was also Egyptian. So she definitely had this different type of mindset, in a sense, um, versus the Hebrews did, versus how the Hebrews did. Um, I didn't care for her because she was very much forceful on um her god her goddess sorry versus you know yahweh and i just i didn't i didn't like it um she very much so used her body a lot when it came to solomon and getting his attention she was very sneaky she she plotted a lot of things and she just reminded me of a serpent i, I mean she played her role very well like she did great as the third wife being what she was an egyptian um a pharaoh's daughter but i didn't care for her like the writing was so good that I just didn't care for her, like, at all. Now, there were some parts where I felt like she could be redeemed, but I really was, I really didn't care, even if, even in those parts. I just, I didn't care. I didn't like her. I, I'm biased. She's the only wife that I didn't care for. Um, so moving on, after her, there was a fourth wife, who is the Queen of Sheba, but in this book, um, Jill gave her a name, which is Nicola, I think, Nicola, Nicola, it'll be on the screen. I can never pronounce it right. I'm probably gonna have to rewatch Jill's video and figure out how to pronounce this name properly, but yes um she was a queen of sheba and i loved her a lot she's literally second for me to abishag um because she was very much 
obviously a queen so she knew how politics work she knew how to run a kingdom she knew how to carry herself she understood how things worked um she was also very smart with how she handled things and she knew right from wrong there was an incident in the story that kind of made me mad with solomon it pissed me off with solomon so bad and she was almost going to do it this close to doing it um i'm not going to tell you guys what it is obviously if you want to know what it is watch the reading blog because i talk about it in the reading blog in depth but i don't want to spoil it for anybody who wants to read it and don't want to know anything about the story but um i will say nicola was amazing i enjoyed her as the fourth wife obviously as a queen she carried herself phenomenally um overall all the wives were amazing to me as the characters in the story they all served a different purpose they all had love from um solomon but in a different way. Now, I will respect Solomon for the simple fact that he wasn't in a rush to get to know these women. And when I say no, I mean sex. Back in the day, back in the Bible, if you read in the Bible, it talks about, you know, a man knowing a woman. When it talks about knowing a woman or knowing a man, it basically means they didn't have sex. But, um, so yeah, Solomon definitely wanted to wait around till he had some type of love for these women. So I thought that was really amazing. Like I said, I love the poetic kind of feel to this because it pulled from Song of Solomon a lot. I was literally flipping back and forth, back and forth from my Bible, um, using the Bible app. Like, all of these purple tabs, I don't know if you guys can see, are all related to scriptures. Um, so you guys know, I had my Holy Bible app, um, opened up and you could see that actually in the reading blog. I was pulling things up because this was amazing like the scriptures and everything so I will say this is very heavy on scripture very heavy which I give thumbs up to because I think that's important when you're reading biblical fiction I want to find I want to read scripture in the text especially if it's biblical fiction like it's based off of the Bible. It's based off of people in the Bible. It's based off of stories in the Bible. So I want to be able to pick out those scriptures and find those scriptures. Christian fiction, not so much. I just want to see the faith aspects in my Christian fiction. But when it comes to biblical fiction, I need you to tell me, like, I need to see actual scripture in the text so that I can then, therefore, go into my Bible, look up the scripture, read it for myself, and make sure they're, you know, aligned accordingly, if that makes sense. But, um, yeah, let me get a little swig. Overall, as I said in the beginning of this video, I loved it. Um, the Heart of a King is just beautifully written. Um, I, I don't even know how many times I could say it's beautifully written. I just, I love the way she wrote. This is, again, like I said in the last video, this is my first Jill Eileen Smith read. This is based off of her four novellas, and I'll put the covers of the four novellas here. But um, they're basically the four novellas compiled into one book, which is this book here. But also it includes the perspective of King Solomon. So she does still advise that you read the novellas. I'm personally going to read the novellas. They're all less than 110 pages, 106, I think. Um, so I'm still going to read the novellas to see if there's any differences. But um, I will say for having not read the novellas, and this being my first Jill Eileen Smith, I'm highly impressed with her writing. I love the story. I fell in love with it the minute I, like, got into it. And I loved how she spaced out each wife. I do, however, I think that's why I didn't give it a five stars. I do wish that there was a lot more interaction between the four wives. Though, now that I'm thinking about it, they probably would not have interacted that closely. Like, I know Abishak and Nama, the first and second wife... Um, they interacted because they lived, like, I believe in the palace. Um, but Sitai didn't live in the palace because she was from a foreign land and she believed in a different religion. I, a religion? God? Goddess? I don't even know. But she didn't believe in Yahweh. So he didn't allow his wives that did not believe in Yahweh to live in the palace. He actually built them a palace outside of the walls, which that's a whole nother thing that I didn't understand. Um, there were a few chapters that introduced his daughters from the foreign wives, and I thought that was pretty interesting that um, Jill included that. Um, just seeing his daughters who wanted to be like him, but I guess they had to follow the religion of their mother or like the faith of their mother, so they couldn't live within the palace walls, and they really wanted to live in the palace, but he couldn't allow it because of the laws that God created for the Hebrew people. So I thought that was interesting. Um, there was also this thing where, like, all these foreign kings and things brought, like, women for him. I didn't understand. Like, I felt like he should not have accepted those women. And I feel like that's where everything went wrong for King Solomon. It's like, when he started to accept and marry these foreign women, when God clearly gave, like, laws for them not to do that, 
whatever. Like, you know, just... Uh, Solomon just... Uh, he irritated me with the things that he did. Because it's like, you're not intentionally trying or wanting to break the laws, but you broke them regardless of it being intentional or not. So, you had to deal with the consequences, but God didn't really reprimand you for it but there were still consequences for your actions even if it wasn't intentional so i feel like that's where things just went crazy for him um but yeah solomon as a whole was just a very interesting character very interesting um but yeah i definitely would recommend the heart of a king by joe eileen smith i will say i am obsessed with this cover the colors the spine blue and purple <laughs> I have this thing with, like, teal and purple together. I think teal and purple is really pretty. Teal and lavender is really pretty. I love lavender. Like, that's my color, hence why I have lavender a part of the DOI logo. Lavender is, like, one of my favorite colors. Okay. So. And what it also symbolizes within Christianity as well. Um, so, yeah. But I enjoyed this book a lot. I definitely would recommend it. Totally would tell you guys to check it out. Even if you read the four novellas still read this because i think even though she says it takes pieces from the novellas i still feel like it's a complete different story now like i said i'm not 100 percent sure because i haven't read the novellas i do plan to read those novellas but i enjoyed this nonetheless and highly recommend it so if you guys are interested in seeing my written review i will leave it linked down below if you guys want to see my reading vlog which is a little bit more spoilery where i talk about things that actually go on in the book um you can just click the on the screen for that but yeah, if you want to grab a copy, I will leave links down below to christianbook.com as well as Amazon for you to check out. And that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, rating, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!